Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So for this video, I'm going to be talking you through the five books that I managed to get through this month. Now, I feel like it was quite a good reading month for me in terms of there were quite a few in there that I absolutely loved, which is obviously always a good thing. So I will jump right into it and start with the first book that I managed to get through this month, which was, it is the final book in the Brandon Sanderson Mistborn series. This one is called The Hero of Ages. And before this, we've got The Final Empire and The Well of Ascension. So this month I finished The Hero of Ages, which meant the end of this series. And I absolutely loved it. I feel like if you're not into fantasy or you're wanting to get into it, this is such a good entryway into the fantasy genre. It's such a readable and accessible fantasy series. So if you are in the market to start reading fantasy or looking for a series to inspire you and get you into it, I would definitely recommend this Mistborn series. Brandon Sanderson's writing is so readable and so accessible, so I highly recommend. It's about our main character, Vin, who as a young girl discovers that she is a Mistborn. Now, the magic system in this world is based on metals. And as a Mistborn, you can tap into lots of different powers depending on which metal you've ingested and are burning at that time. So this book is set in a city called Luthadel where everything is gray, the sun is red, green grass doesn't exist, they don't know what it is, it's all brown, ash falls all the time, and all the citizens of this world are forced to stay in their houses at night time because of the descending mist that envelop their world come night time. So it's a super cozy read. I think anything involving mist just feels so cozy to me. So this city, Luthadel, is ruled by the evil Lord Ruler. And this series is all about how Vin and her group of friends set out to defeat the Lord Ruler and save the world, basically. So it's a story of friendship, which I love reading about. I loved watching their friendships develop. And to me, that was the strongest element of this whole series. I loved reading about it. And I loved how Vin was a strong female lead. So yeah, five out of five fantasy series from me. I really, really enjoyed it. And a really great wintry read, I think. So the next book that I read this month, I've spoken about quite a lot. I've done a full reading vlog on it. So go back and watch that video if you're wanting to know a more in-depth review. I won't talk about it too much, but this is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. And I love this book so much. It's a dark academia come murder mystery. The main character is called Richard and he goes to college and becomes a part of the Greek class. And obviously a murder happens. There is so much tension in this book. I feel like Donna Tartt really builds that tension so, so well. And I was so hooked throughout the whole of this book. But yeah, if you want to see my full review and me reading this book, go and watch my reading vlog for The Secret History. The third book that I read this month was Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason. And I did really enjoy this book. It's about a woman who has split up with her husband and we are looking back on her life up until this point. This book mainly talks about the struggles of living with undiagnosed mental illness and how this affects the main character Martha and those around her, her close family and friends. It shows that by not knowing why she's feeling this way or why her mind does these things, she tries to live this normal life and how this impacts her and people around her so negatively. In this book, Martha has a twin sister. I think it's a twin, or they're very close, but I'm, I'm sure it's a twin. And her life goes in such a different direction. And I feel like this serves to heighten the contrast between their lives and just really shows the struggle that Martha goes through on a daily basis when you compare the two lives of the sisters. And I think by having these sisters having such a close relationship, it really shows the difference and the struggles that Martha goes through. My favourite element of this book is definitely how Meg Mason builds the relationships between Martha and her family. She has both very fraught relationships, like with her mother, or these loving relationships like she has with her father. And I think my favourite relationship to read about was Martha with her dad. I loved reading about that and was really a light in the darkness of this book. But overall, I did find this book really quite oppressively sad. It is so rooted in reality and that paired with the really harsh and sad reality of living with this mental illness, I just found it a lot to read, to be honest. 
I can so see why people absolutely love this book, but I would have loved an element of maybe like magical realism or just a bit of fantasy, a bit of out of the ordinary or just something not so rooted in reality. They are my favorite types of books. I like it when there's some sort of weird otherworldly element that's used as a tool to explain the themes or subjects in a book. So yeah, it felt just very gritty and sad. And I do think it's a really great book, but maybe just not something that I personally gravitate towards, but I did think it was really good. And I think I would give it a three and a half stars. So still a really good solid book, but just not necessarily my cup of tea. The next book that I read this month is The Vegetarian by Han Kang. And this is translated from Korean by Deborah Smith. Now this book is absolutely heartbreaking. It's about an eating disorder. How our main character, I actually can't remember her name. I don't know about you, but I feel like after I read a book, I literally just forget their names immediately. But it's, our main character has these really vivid dreams, really gory dreams about meat and eating meat. So therefore she decides to stop eating meat and become a vegetarian. Now, this does not go down well with her husband and her family. They do not take it well. They can't understand where she's coming from. They're just so confused by her choices. And this initial refusal of eating meat develops into something much, much darker and much, much worse and makes for a devastating decline in the main character's life. Now, this book is not what I thought it was gonna be at all. It is much darker, much more heartbreaking. I don't know what I expected from this book, but I wasn't expecting it to be this heartbreaking and this sad. I feel like the main character in this book is just failed time and time again by those around her. And I feel like she is such a victim of people around her and her surroundings. So I thought this was such a devastating book, but so, so beautifully written. I absolutely loved the writing style. It was so delicate and just heartbreaking. So. Yeah, I love this book. I think I gave it a four out of five stars. Really, really sad, but yeah, so beautifully written by Han Kang. So the final book that I read this month, now I have heard so much about this. Everyone loving this book. It is Circe by Madeline Miller. And I'm so glad I finally got round to reading it because I absolutely loved it. I gave it five out of five stars. So, so good. I loved reading about Greek mythology. This is the first book that I've ever read centered around Greek mythology and it definitely will not be my last. I loved it so much. It felt so magical and fantastical and yeah, I just absolutely loved it. I feel like it really transports you into just a whole nother world, time, space, everything in between. I loved it. Now this book follows obviously Circe, who is the daughter of Helios who is the god of the sun. Now Circe is not loved by any means or respected by her family and fellow gods, but Circe soon discovers that she can do magic, which threatens the other gods massively. Now, after she discovers this, she is banished to a solitary life on an island where she cannot leave. However, over the centuries that she lives there, both gods and mortals come onto her island, both good and bad, and it shows how she interacts with them. Now, as she's been ostracized from her family and fellow gods, she instead finds love from mortals, where, where soon enough, the fact that she is a god and ageless serves to be a hindrance and somewhat of a burden. But this is where she seems to get her love and relationships. She has such an affinity with mortals and doesn't seem to really relate to the gods at all around her. The thing I love most about this book that is in comparison to the other group mythology tales that you hear of war and adventure, this book feels quite quiet and gentle, talking about Circe's solitary life a lot of the time. So I absolutely love this book and definitely not my last book by Madeline Miller. I know she has Song of Achilles out, so do let me know if that is worth the read as well. But yeah, five out of five stars for this book. Really, really loved it. So these are the five books that I read in November. Do let me know if you've read any of them and loved them or hated them, whatever you think, do let me know in the comments. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.